So spinal decompression surgery is one of the commonest operations I do, and it's aimed at taking the pressure off the nerve roots or the spinal cord, depending on which bit of the spine has the tightness in it. And it's aimed at taking the pressure off those neural structures in an effort to try to alleviate the patient's pain. In the lumbar spine, which is the commonest place where I'd operate, so that is the lower back, you can have, and it's, it's a common process over time, that in the aging spine, you will have tightness around the nerve roots from a combination of both the soft tissues and the bone. So that's a combination of the ligaments, the disc or a slip disc as it's commonly known, and the bones or the joints at the back of the spine over time growing or digging into the nerve roots. This then can give the patient pain, usually down the leg, but can be into the buttock or into the, the foot. And that pain can often come on when the patient walks. The goal of the surgery is to identify which of those nerves is being squashed. And then as a spine surgeon, my job is to take the pressure off those nerves in an effort to try and give the patient their best symptomatic relief. Spinal decompressive surgery works by taking the mechanical pressure off a squash nerve root. The squash nerve root is what causes the sciatic pain, or, or this is often referred to as a claudication pain as well. And by removing the mechanical pressure, whether that's taking away excess ligament or excess bone, or indeed a, a slip disc, that pressure relief usually takes the patient's sciatic pain away. And it's often a fairly instantaneous uh, result in that patients will often tell me the next day after their surgery, or indeed in the recovery room after their anesthetic, that their, their leg pain has gone. And that's often a great relief for them. And of course, a great relief for me too. So the success rate quoted by the British Society of Spine Surgeons is around 80% good relief for sciatica after lumbar spinal decompressive surgery. The results of surgery can vary between patients and it can slightly depend on what the underlying diagnosis is. And what I mean by that is whether the patient has a squash nerve from a an acute disc prolapse, or indeed it's a more chronic process that's come on over many years, such as in lumbar spinal stenosis or, or tightness around the nerve roots in the, the older patient. But globally speaking, the, the results are good, and those results cannot usually be achieved um, in a long-standing fashion by following non-operative methods. And that's specifically for patients with lumbar stenosis. And that's because the mechanical pressure won't go away without a surgeon removing it. In the same light, many patients can have tightness. And if, if they don't have symptoms, they then do not have to have an operation. And that's why it's extremely important for a patient and a surgeon to meet and to discuss their symptoms and then to correlate those with their scan before making any decision as to what's the best thing for that patient. I myself very much try to provide a, a very tailored bespoke service for each and every patient by making those decisions and sharing the decision making with my patients before we make, make the final plan for what's going to work best for them. After spinal decompressive surgery, often the patient feels very good the following day in that their, their symptoms of leg pain have often gone or are greatly improved. In the early phases, I encourage patients to get up and mobilize and to do that on a regular, regular occurrence throughout the course of the days and the weeks early on. I specifically ask patients to avoid getting into um, baths and the swimming pool 
in the first few weeks after surgery. So usually three to four weeks is we want the wound to mature and we don't want an infection getting into that lumbar spinal wound. In terms of driving, I ask for patients not to drive for the first four weeks after lumbar spinal surgery, but that is strictly between them and their insurer. And so what I offer and what any surgeon um, suggests is purely a guidance. Finally, if the decompressive surgery requires instrumentation or, or metal work put into the spine, I usually ask them to avoid heavy lifting for the first three months after surgery, just to allow for everything to settle down and mature enough such that it's safe for them to proceed to more uh, involved activities. I'm very happy after they've had their surgery though for patients to be proactive and to, to really test out their, their, their legs and get going really from day one. So there is no good way that an individual patient can affect the natural history. So what that means is if a patient is, has sciatica and is left to manage on their own, we're waiting for, for mother nature to run her course. If a patient has a reversible problem, so that for example, could be a slip disc where the fragment has detached and the fragment that is detached and pressing on the nerve has a, a natural ability to resorb itself and then therefore the pressure to relieve itself. That is something that only mother nature can control. Having specific exercises or going to see lots of different types of therapists can be very helpful, but they do not usually affect the natural history. And there certainly isn't strong evidence to show that they can change what the patient's symptoms will be in the long term. If indeed the patient has mechanical pressure and symptoms that don't settle of their own accord and don't settle through non-operative measures, then ultimately often the only thing that can be most beneficial for them is to undergo a spinal operation. That of course though has to be remembered as the last resort as there are of course many complications that can occur and so open surgery should really be thought of as the last thing to undertake until all other non-operative measures have been explored. But in direct answer to the question, those non-operative measures are somewhat waiting for the natural history or mother nature to affect her own changes and for the patient's symptoms to settle of their own accord and don't actually directly take the pressure off the nerve roots.